Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is going to be the first in a series, so it'll be a new playlist on my channel, uh, where I'll be taking a deeper dive into Adventures Dark and Deep. Adventures Dark and Deep is written by Joseph Block and um, it is, and I will read right from the back cover of it, uh, it is posing the question... What if Gary Gygax had been allowed to go through with his plans for a second edition of the world's most popular role-playing game? Uh, and in 1985, Gary Gygax left TSR unable to continue developing on advanced Dungeons & Dragons. However, he wrote several articles in Dragon Magazine detailing what the new edition of the game would look like and in later years expanded greatly on those articles in various online forums uh, and other venues. Adventures Dark and Deep is an attempt to realize those plans and create the game that Gygax was unable to do. This detailed tome, and, and really it's a series of three tomes, uh, is the results of years of research and effort and provides a glimpse into how a new edition of the world's most popular role-playing game might have appeared if the creator had remained at the helm. So what you're really getting here is a, um, is a very well-researched and, uh, and developed what-if uh, kind of a product here. So what if Gary Gygax actually wrote uh, a D&D second edition uh, and um, and and for that reason you know I think it has a great deal of uh, importance to have in your collection and importance for you to actually run it uh, you know and and get a feel for uh, Gary Gygax's vision for Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, as he expressed in his later writings after he was uh, um, ejected from TSR. So what I'm going to do in this series of videos is uh, I am going to cover each of the books and I'm going to focus in on uh, the differences from a D and D first edition uh, to this here, and um, you know I, I want to make another um, comment here. Uh, this was written in two thousand, you know, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Um, that's that's the earliest publication dates on these, and so you know you might be asking, all right, well this is already twelve years old. It's not meant to be anything other than what it is. This is the, this is the, you know, potential probable vision that Gary Gygax would have had for AD&D 2nd Edition. So to say, well, this is lacking some of the more modern mechanics and, and such, that's not what it's developed to do. All right, uh, this was created to be a reflection of what Gary might have done, you know, back in 1986, 87, working on this. So in, in that sense, I think it's a really important thing for you to, um, you know, bear in mind while you're playing this uh, or running this. And secondly, um, you're, you're, of course, free to modify it in any way to, uh, you know, to add some of those modern mechanics, whether it be uh, ascending armor class or or things like that because it is still very much open for you know rule zero and homebrewing and all of that as well. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that uh, you know BRW Games, uh, you know, run by Joseph Block, um, he's very prolific and he is still producing a lot of materials for for this game system and also. Um, you know, compatible materials and supplements for, um, you know, for whether it be for 5e or any OSR uh, game system as well. And uh, I had just spoken to him at the uh, the Philadelphia Game Expo 
uh, not this past weekend, the previous weekend, and um, or maybe it was this past weekend, and um, he said that there are more uh, updated versions of some of his supplementals and such uh, coming out uh, soon, as early as March, where uh, he's removing the uh, the OGL and making it uh, making it more compliant with uh, Creative Commons and SRD 5.1 and so on. So there are new materials coming out that are possibly changing some of the nomenclature and other things found in uh, the books to make them um, step beyond and, and away from the OGL 1.0a. So anyway, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to dig deep into any one of these books just yet. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over them and, and show you what uh, each book um, each book has to offer. And, uh, and like I said, I just completed my set yesterday. Uh, so I will go to a larger screen and talk about um, the individual books. So the first one I started off with was the, the player's manual. And uh, this is a, you know, this is a rule book that uh, goes through, uh, so 247 you know, plus pages, or, or actually it's probably about 250. So 250, 250 page uh, player manual. And I will be doing the deepest dive into this um, as I, you know, begin this series of videos. And it is going to be very, very familiar with you if you are familiar with AD&D First Edition. So it's not going to be um, it's not going to be a totally different game system. So that this is the first that I picked up in the series. The second is the Game Master's Toolkit, and this obviously is going to be designed for the Game Masters, and it's going to give you uh, creating new, you know, how to create new character races and classes and non-player characters and, you know, all of the tools that a game master would need in order to start creating his or her own campaign, um, you know, and world settings and such. It gives all of the uh, various, uh, you know, various types of uh, effects that might uh, impact the player characters, whether it be diseases or uh, environmental hazards and such. So again, I will be doing a deeper dive into this as well. And now my my newest acquisition, uh, which actually arrived yesterday, I got this on eBay. All right, and this is the Bestiary, which is a which is a monster monster book. Now you could still get this on Drive Through RPG, but you can only get this on Drive Through RPG through um, uh, in hardback. And so, I really like to, you know, if I have if I have softback for everything else, I want to get the softback as well. Um, you know, plus there's always the issue of shelf space. And so, um, you know, I, I just got this yesterday. I'm going to obviously do less of a deeper dive into this when it comes time for that, because, um, you know, many of these monsters are, are going to, and creatures and such are going to be um, familiar to you if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, especially old school Dungeons and Dragons. And, uh, but I will focus on some of the ones that are unique to the game system. And so I will specifically be looking for those uh, as well. Now, all of these come in PDF and, you know, I will, you know, very, very briefly switch over and show you so, um, and show you just some of the art. I mean, the, the artwork, the cover art, I just love this. Uh, cover art here and it is uh, you know I, I think it really does capture the feel you know of the game I mean here you have your adventurers um, and and wow this like really does capture what adventurers look like when they're coming into so you see that they're approaching this uh, you know this dungeon perhaps or, or cave system here they have their torches ready to go here they have all their 
they're either their pack animals or their horses and everything. They're they're going to be tied up outside, and here here are they starting to approach to enter in. And uh, you know, as a you know as a long time dungeon master, I, I mean, this is something that my players have you know actually role played out and spoke about, and that oh, this is what our characters are going to do in just getting prepared to enter the dungeon. So I really love this image. It to me it truly captures the um you know the title of it too, right? So you can see that they're about to take an adventure and go into the dark and deep uh you know um confines of whether this is a cave system or a dungeon. Uh, but uh, again, it has, uh, and I will expand this really quickly. So you have all of the different subsections and um, and they're probably hyperlinked, which I will be very, very impressed with. Uh, yes, they are definitely hyperlinked. So let's see, uh, combat, let's take a quick jump to combat here. So armor class and movement, and you know, here we go to uh, all of the all the different types of armor classes and movement. Again, if you want to convert this to um, ascending armor class, it's fairly easy to do. Um, your, you know, if you have something uh, an armor class of uh, of a one, let's say, well, that's the equivalent of an armor class of nineteen, All right? And then you you basically go down uh, down the line until you know, a 10 is still a 10, right? So, um, and then we have uh, shields and such, but I, I am going to go into much more detail on this. I was just really testing the hyperlink. Um, but you can see that there is a lot going on here. It's pretty comprehensive, right? So you have a section on creating characters uh, going all the way through. Uh, so. 86 pages of character um, creation here. And then combat, uh, combat you have probably about 20 some odd pages uh, just dealing with combat, magic. And I'll go through the whole system of what magic would look like and such and do a comparison between this and, um, you know, and uh, AD&D first edition as well. And then we go into the uh, appendices, uh, so we have the assassin is appendix A, weapon adjustments versus armor type. Uh, you know, that was something that, you know, was very rarely used, I, I think, in AD&D first edition. And, you know, perhaps Gary still kept on speaking about using this system. So we'll see if it made it a little bit more uh, usable. Uh, and then combat tables, um, which is something that you'd probably eliminate when uh, if you do shift to uh, ascending armor class, that's one of the key things. So that's the uh, that's the first book that uh, I also want to go over and let me make sure I'm looking at the right one. All right, so this is the game master's tools and real quick preview on this. So we will see. Um, so here we have creating characters. Uh, so creating uh, character races, creating character classes, and non-player characters. Dungeon environments, uh, the dungeons, the uh, or the game environment. Dungeons, wildernesses, swimming and underwater travel, flight, hazards, uh, impediments and dangers, weather, combat, social encounters, treasure, experience, building and fortifications. So. Uh, building construction and such. So you, you started to get the the kind of domain play kind of built into this and, you know, mass combat and such. Uh, mining operations, that's interesting to see. Ships and waterborne travel, um, shipboard encounters, uh, seaborne encounters, ships, creating of the setting. So you have all of the tools that a game master will need in order to create a, uh, you know, a campaign and, and a, a campaign setting, a living and breathing world. And then finally, again, I always like to double check and make sure that I'm switching and 
let's see yes you are looking at the right page here and finally we have adventures dark and deep the bestiary which finally got my hands on and we will go to oh let's see there's not an index in the front um well not really uh let's see so here we have um wilderness dungeon uh wilderness and dungeon monster descriptions underwater and waterborne monster descriptions prehistoric monster descriptions extra planar monster descriptions and then modifying and creating new monsters the psychic strike uh which is kind of like psionics right uh random creatures of the lower planes magic resistance standard powers of deities uh and so on so it's organized a little bit differently than you might um then you might be, um, and it's not hyperlinked. Um, so let's take a real quick look at just some of the wilderness and monster descriptions. So we start off with some unique ones here. So the Ariane, I've never heard of. And so uh, Ankhead is, of course, you know, common in, uh, in any D&D uh edition so you're going to have a mix of of some new and and old uh anise is in monster manual 2 giant ants and ant lion but anyway i will go into more detail with that when i start covering uh the uh the bestiary separately. So, so yes, this will be the first of a series of uh, of videos in its own uh, in its own playlist, and uh, really looking forward to it. Really looking to you know take a look at this game system and and do that deeper dive into it and uh, and start focusing on what makes this um, a standout system that um you know if you are a big fan of old school dungeons and dragons uh then this is a a natural step forward um you know to something beyond a d and d first edition without it actually being a d and d second edition so it's a you know it's a reflection of you know what might have been if uh gary gygax wrote AD and D second edition. So really excited to dig into this. I want to thank Joseph Block for, um, you know, for not only just creating this, but really promoting, uh, really promoting just Gary Gygax's work, uh, especially uh, his work with um, with Greyhawk. Uh, you know, Joseph Block is the Greyhawk Grognard. He has a a website. Um, you know, he has a uh, a YouTube channel that I highly, highly recommend that you check out. And uh, I mean, uh, it is a really, really great site. And he is just churning out content, um, you know, like crazy as far as uh, keeping Greyhawk alive. Uh, and so uh, really appreciate all the work that he does with that as well. So you all have a great day. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and you know like the video, share the video, and uh, and leave your comments in there. If you have run this game system, please feel free to jump into the comments section and say, hey, you know what? Take a specific look at this or whatever, so you can direct the way that I am going to approach this content. Um, you know that's that's the best way to get involved with this channel. Uh, because I do respond to your comments and I, I try to uh, let you lead me into looking at various aspects of the game that I am covering. And um, you know, I'm really looking, for, really looking forward to doing this deeper dive. So you have a great day and uh, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. My next planned convention is going to be uh, Rising Phoenix. Game Con in uh, Milton, Massachusetts on April 
Uh, I'm going to forget the dates, uh, but sometime in April, probably like 15, 16, 17, I think, or maybe it's slightly different. Um, but I will be at that convention and I will be running, um, I will be running five different games there. So really looking forward to that. And I'll, I'll have a video detailing as we start approaching that, um, that time. So you'll have a great one. Take care.